Okay, uh, greetings to all my Black Tiger peeps out there. Uh, in response to a number of you uh, are now making the buckler that is kind of synonymous with any time you know, Toro steps out with sword and buckler, there's a very specific shape to that buckler that he's out there with. And people are wanting to know how they can best uh, utilize that buckler. Now, uh, as you already know, there are the, some of the more common types of bucklers are just your typical round buckler. Uh, but the problem that I have with that buckler early on when I was first using that is the fact that uh, when you try to move a weapon aside, uh, because it's just a basically round piece of wood, it would the blade could easily just slide right around and it still comes online to you and can threaten you. It uh, wasn't very effective as far as I was concerned. Additionally, too, trying to uh, use it offensively was not really much of an option unless you were to use the flat or you just happened to catch the right edge on there to knock it out of the way. It just wasn't sufficient as far as what I wanted to be able to do with an offhand uh, defensive device. So I went ahead and devise my own buckler. Uh, as you can see here, there's a number of edges on here. It's not your typical standard shape, but uh, I, it, it's, it solves a number of issues that, uh, that I ran into in using the other types of bucklers that are out there. For one, it's more difficult to blind yourself because I have this V cut out of the top of it. So anytime I'm actually in the midst of using it, I can see my opponent's arm and body. I don't care about seeing the sword. The only thing I care about is being able to see my opponent's arm and body, their arm and the torso, as it were. Just because if you can see that, you know what their weapon is doing. Their sword could be invisible for all you care. As long as you can see the torso and that arm, you're good to go. This allows for that. In addition, it's also a catch edge on there, which I'll show you in a moment exactly how to use that. Here too, catch edges on there. If you were to catch a sword on the edge, instead of sliding around and being able to come back online with your body, it's gonna catch up or down and it's not going anywhere. So it's another extra beat of time you would be able to use against your opponent. And as we all know, fencing is measured in just beats of time. They're very, very short fractions of a second, but every one that you can get for yourself is an advantage for you. So now what I'm gonna do is gonna cover, uh, cover down on exactly how you use this because there's a very specific technique involved to it. Now, if you've got a standard buckler in your hand, someone's coming at you, you're gonna move that buckler around a lot in order to try and intercept that, you know. But with this buckler, that's unnecessary. And I'm about to show you how. Okay, so one of the advantages of this particular style of buckler is the fact that you don't need to be moving it away from your body in order to be able to best utilize it. In fact, to best utilize it, you want to keep it stationary. But you might be thinking to yourself, how am I gonna move somebody's sword who is going to be on its way into me? Funny you should ask. Hold it up here. So let's say for example, Swordsman has just attacked me, and if I just simply left my buckler here, um, obviously it's a path to me, I'm gonna get hit, and so ends my time in the tournament for that match. Or if you had a standard buckler, you might be doing something like this and moving it to the side, getting it out of the way, that's all well and fine, uh, but with this particular buckler, you can keep it right there in front of you, now just turn your wrist. And now, they finish that attack, totally misses me. Or if I'm more comfortable with it, if I wanna turn it this way, no worries, Deflects the, buck, or deflects the sword off to the side. So I have the V, it allows me to see my opponent's weapon and body, it allows me to see everything I need to see in order to deflect, and then I will turn the wrist. Now the nice thing about this is that I'm never going to have to reveal. I couldn't be potentially uh, fooled by the, uh, my opponent's feint, for example, where they feint to the outside, my buckler moves to intercept, and then it moves around my buckler and ends up stabbing me because I opened up a doorway to my body. I will leave it in front of me, and when that person comes at me, I'm just turning the wrist. Either direction doesn't matter. Whatever you're comfortable with, whatever it is that you uh, have in mind to counter your opponent, all you need to do is turn your wrist. Doesn't matter if you catch it to here, you can turn it to the outside. It's all good. Okay, now the nice thing about these edges, as I mentioned, if you cut somebody on the outside edge and they tried to roll around, that's the end result. That's the end result, okay? Now, thank you. So, just to recap real quick, you're able to keep this in front of you, turning of the wrist will divert your opponent's sword. Now, another thing that I like about this particular style of buckler is the fact I can use it offensively against my opponent's weapon. This V in the top and in the bottom. If you would take your standard high guard there, if you will. Okay, I'm facing your typical standard high guard fighter. Okay. So your typical high guard fighter there, I've got their weapon there, I've got my sword, I'm a low guard fighter, my sword is down low. But I want to get that person's sword taken care of. As you'll hear me say as a, from teacher to student a hundred times, if not a thousand times, you have to deal with the threat. So when this person comes at me, or I should say, go ahead, on guard. 
when I take it actually the attack to them, I'm going to do so in such fashion that I will dip the buckler forward and into the weapon. And what's going to happen is I end up catching the weapon, and the closer I get, the farther up it deflects. Now, this is effective no matter whether or not you're dealing with a person who's a high guard fighter. You could have this low guard fighter here, and instead of dipping it forward, I'm going to dip it down, where I'm coming in and catching my opponent's weapon here. You use it offensively, you extend the arm as if it was a sword. When you're going to attack, extend the arm, then comes the body. Same thing here, you're gonna use this buckler offensively, you're going to extend the arm. And then, once you're on it, you've got the weapon, just follow it in. And because it's a groove, it catches and holds. Anytime you put pressure on someone, that one moment instinct is to put pressure back. And that's exactly what you want. It catches them here and it holds them here. And again, if you feel like it, turn your wrist. You'll deflect them even further. I don't find it necessary because shoving them either straight down or shoving them straight up is more than enough. But if you want to be very cautious on your way in, this doesn't cost you anything. Go ahead and break that for the moment. So, here's how you would engage that person's weapon if you wanted to use your buckler offensively. You've got the avenue, which is this high guard fighter. You've got this nice empty space underneath there. So what you'll do, don't even bother, don't move, don't worry about it, is you're going to move forward with the explosion off the back leg, timed with the extension of the front arm. Here. And you'll notice the closer I get to my opponent, the farther up her weapon goes. Okay, now on guard. So again, here, the explosion off the back leg, dipping the buckler forward, because that is putting the catching edge toward the weapon. No matter whether I catch it on the edge here, catch it on the edge here, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be exactly perfect. It'll guide all by itself by virtue of the fact that you've got this groove here. Now, quickly, it looks like so. Be very careful, of course, not to charge into your opponent. You don't want to hit them. The explosion comes off the back leg. Strike with your sword as you pass by. Okay, low guard fighter. Same thing, holding your buckler like so. I hold the groove in such fashion that I can see my opponent's arm and torso. Now I want to use this offensively against this mid guard fighter. Okay, just go ahead and hold that midline. I'm here, got a good measure. I want to attack with it, so I will explode off of there, leaning the catch edge forward. However your footwork you want it to look is up to you. Doing it slowly is a little more difficult than at full speed, but the explosion is the same off the back leg. Catching with the edge. Do not charge into your opponent. You don't want to crush into their weapon. You don't want to crush into them. Okay, lastly, the thing that I like about this particular style of buckler, if you think about it back in the day, if I was actually in a duel with somebody, they've got that razor sharp tip on the end of their sword, I've got this wooden buckler here. Well, in today's game, you'll see people do things like try to strike your buckler at the edge in order to turn like a door, allow them the passage right, right straight through to you. That wasn't enough for me. It wasn't good enough. So, on the back of this buckler is a very nice, thick, beefy handle on there. You can get this, this is, you go to Home Depot, you find uh, a trowel or anything like that, you'll find this kind of a handle, just take the screws out and affix it to the back. Now what that does is it gives you a great deal of surface area to wrap your hand around. And what happens now, when someone tries to punch to the edge of your buckler, go ahead and try to hit the edge here. They try to hit the edge of that, it's not going anywhere. I mean, I could literally bend her sword in half. Now, punch it, okay, punch the other side, okay? It's not coming through to me because of the fact that it's not this thin little metal handle inside my hand that's just simply gonna turn like a revolving door. No, no, no. Much a different effect when you've got a lot of surface area to grab onto. Now, I covered the entirety of the buckler, the face of the buckler, with a suede on there because of this particular specific reason. I'm a big fan of realism. I want it to be as realistic as possible. Now, obviously, we can't simulate exactly a razor-sharp tip punching into a wooden buckler and then being able to show what happens as a result of that. However, the tips of our rapiers are blunted with these rubber stop tips, right? Suede is a very nice, uh, resistant, catchy material. So when my opponent tries to push on there, I can manipulate that weapon anywhere I wish to. And I can also use this offensively. 
if my opponent has their sword out there, show me just your typical mid guard, high guard, doesn't matter. If they got their sword out there in front of you, you can use this offensively by thrusting the buckler forward and putting it on there and moving them aside. This is simulating what would happen when a razor sharp tip hits the wooden, hit a wooden buckler. It would hit, bury itself in a bit, catch, and now you can move that anywhere you wish. For one brief moment of time, you will simulate that the same way. You will hit and move them. All you have to do is put it on there. And remember, what is a person's instinct in that first moment when you put pressure on them? They push back. So they help you catch their sword. Now move it anywhere you want and stab them accordingly. So to recap, the edges, they catch. They don't allow a, your opponent's weapon to spin around and get on line with you. Thick handle gives you more surface area so your opponent cannot punch through it like it was a door. And then of course, covering it in the suede so that way you can use it offensively in this manner as well to move their weapon anywhere you wish. This is why I use this kind of buckler.